Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, fans of Astro. This is Battlefield 1. In today's weapon review, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Che Regatti self loading rifle, available, of course, to the medic class in Battlefield 1. We're going to be looking at the stats of the weapon in question, compare the different variants to each other, as well as, of course, other medic weaponry available in Battlefield 1. And last but certainly not least, of course, we're also going to be looking at how to get the most out of this weapon when using it on the battlefield. That being said, and jumping straight into the statistical analysis of this weapon, as baseline here, we're going to be using the factory version of the Che Rigotti, which comes with a damage maximum of 38 and a minimum of 28, giving it, of course, a three-shot kill all the way out to 36 meters. From 37 meters onwards, you're going to have to hit four shots if you want to down your target. The fire rate of the weapon, quite high, actually, for the SLR category of weaponry at 299 rounds per minute, paired with a decent muzzle velocity of 700 meters per second and accompanied by a magazine size of 10 which of course is single bullet and strip clip reloaded meaning that the reload times unlike the damage output of this weapon aren't quite so rosy your short reload in this case actually reloading a single bullet is going to take you 2.267 seconds with each additional single bullet reloaded taking you another 0.5 seconds if you can reload five bullets at once a strip clip you're going to have a reload time of 3.267 seconds both of these reload times not being ones you would necessarily want to engage with when having to deal with an automatic player in close quarters moving on from the reload to the recoil here values are essentially what you would expect vertical of 0.8 and horizontal that is to the left and right of 0.4 leaves this weapon in a relatively reasonably low recoil state when it comes to the slrs it's not absolutely got no kick but it's not got enough kick where i would say that at distances where you should should be using this weapon to engage targets, you're at a significant disadvantage because of its recoil values. Spread mechanics are relatively predictable. With a base ADS of 0.21, that's aiming down sight while not moving, an ADS while moving of 0.79, and hip fire at 2.5, this weapon has the typical accuracy traits of this kind of SLR. It comes, of course, with a spread increase per shot of 0.2, netting the factory version of this weapon a maximum fire rate at minimum spread of 256 rounds per minute versus, of course, its maximum fire rate of 299 rounds per minute. With the basic stats then out of the way, how does the factory differentiate itself from the optical and the trench variant? And the first thing that we're obviously going to have to point out here is that the optical version of this weapon comes with a optical sight. Now, you may either very much enjoy optical sights or you may very much not enjoy optical sights. Depending on that, the optical is either going to be an option for you on the battlefield or not. That aside, there is only a couple of key differences when it comes to the performance of these weapons on the battlefield. Firstly, we have a difference in re recoil decrease where the factory comes in at a recoil decrease value of 5.25 the optical and the trench variant both only have a value of three which means of course these weapons are going to take longer to reset their recoil once they've stopped firing an advantage the factory will be able to make use of when firing single bullets and not engaging in the automatic firing mode which is available to all three of these variants i should note at this point where the main differences are however aside from the recoil decrease is in the spread department of things here each weapon is different from the next, whereas the optical comes in with better base ADS of 0.158 versus that of the factory and trench, and a better ADS while moving of 0.593 versus once more the factory and the trench. The trench, as expected, has a better accuracy value for hip fire with 1.5 degrees versus the 2.5 found on both the optical and the factory. However, the differences don't end there. They continue when it comes to the spread increase per shot and spread decrease values of each of these weapons. Now, the first thing to note here is that the factory, as we already mentioned, comes in at a spread increase per shot of 0.2 and a spread decrease of 6. This is degrees per second, in case you were wondering. Now, the optical has a lower spread increase per shot at 0.125, but also a lower spread decrease at 3.75, meaning that these two weapons actually have the same maximum fire rate at minimum spread at 256 rounds per minute. The trench, on the other hand, has the same spread increase per shot of the factory at 0.2, however, an even worse spread decrease when compared to either of the two variants at 3, meaning that its maximum fire rate at minimum spread is actually lower than the other two variants at 224 rounds per minute. Now numbers aside, what does this actually mean when using these weapons on the battlefield? 
Well, if you're going exclusively really into close quarters with your Che Rigotti, the Trench is going to be the better variant because of its better hip fire. Other than that, if you're using this weapon more flexibly, I would argue that is the better way to use this weapon, then the Trench is not an option for you, if you're looking for the best of the two variants at least. It's really down to the factory versus the optical variant for which of the two weapons is better. Now, putting the optical side of the optical variant to one side and just focusing on the differences when it comes to their actual stats, if you prefer to use your SLRs in the the automatic firing mode, then the optical is likely the better choice for you. The reason for this is its lower spread increase per shot. This of course because when you're engaged in automatic fire, you're likely not going to let off your trigger until you've downed your target. Thus the spread decrease not being of any real relevance to you because your spread decrease only kicks in when your weapon stops firing. When you're firing the weapon in its automatic firing mode, you are of course using this weapon at its maximum fire rate, meaning there is no time for your spread decrease to kick in. Thus, after, for example, firing four shots on the optical variant in an automatic firing mode, you have significantly lower spread than if you were to fire four shots in the automatic firing mode on the factory because of its lower spread increase per shot. Now, when it comes to actually using these weapons in a manual mode, in a single firing mode, that is to say, you click every time you want a bullet to go down range, the differences between these weapons become less clear because, of course, they both have the same maximum fire rate at minimum spread. The higher spread increase per shot in the factory being made up for by its higher spread decrease in degrees per second. What the optical variant does have, however, as advantage over the factory is its lower base ADS to begin with, meaning that the weapon is more accurate on every single shot fired. Now the difference isn't too large, but it is nevertheless a difference, especially if you're more of a player that likes to strafe while firing and aiming down sights simultaneously. However, on the other side of things, the factory loses its recoil quicker, which of course it will be able to do in those short breaks you're letting your weapon rest if you're trying to fire it at its maximum fire rate while maintaining minimum spread. So the choice of which of the two weapons you're going to prefer in its single firing mode, not its automatic firing mode, is going to come down to if you're struggling more with the recoil and would like your weapon to recover from its recoil quicker, or you like that tiny little bit of extra base accuracy on every single one of your shots. I personally can't tell you which of these two advantages is better and personally make my decision on the basis of the optical sight not being something I can enjoy too much and preferring the iron sights and thus using the factory version. When it comes however to talking about the Seira Gotti in a more general context, how it compares to other weaponry out there and how to use it best on the battlefield, it's relatively simple to explain. The Che Rigotti is one of the more flexible SLRs out there. It's for close quarters and medium range, everything essentially but long range, and it performs quite well at those distances. It's great for a medic who likes to get into close quarters to actually engage targets and get revives, but it's not your ideal weapon for a medic that wants to stay in close quarters for lengthy periods of time because your reload is going to eventually get you killed, whereas other close quarter medic SLRs have quicker reload mechanisms, magazine reload mechanisms that make them more suited for close quarters. Furthermore, SLRs generally suffer in close quarters because of course they deal their damage out in a lower fire rate state than those of, for example, the SMGs, which is of course a topic for another video in its whole. But when looking at this weapon where it fits in nicely, it's essentially between the M1907 and the Mondragon with the Mondragon being a more long-range geared weapon with a lower fire rate, and the M1907, while having the same fire rate, having a more favorable reload mechanism because, of course, of its magazine reload. So there you have the Che Rigotti. Which one would I recommend? Personally, the factory, the optical is an equally good choice if you enjoy the optical sight. I, however, would love to know about your thoughts on this weapon review and on this weapon, as those, of course, your usual video suggestions for future Battlefield 1 content. So leave those down below in the comments or hit me up with them on Twitter. But with all that being said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 1 video.